want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Potential Church, where you have the power to change your life. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Now, we're getting ready to go live into the service for Potential Church, where we believe you can reach your maximum potential. God bless you, and thank you for being part of Potential Church today. Potential Church, where we believe that you can reach your maximum potential through God. I'm so glad that we are together here today. I want to recognize some people. I want to recognize Dr. Uh, Debbie Booth, our executive producer for our social media. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, let's see, we have tons of people on this morning. Rose Fisher, we have Donald Norquist, a lot, a lot, a lot of our family and friends. Good morning, Pastor Terry. Good morning. Amen. So glad that we are together. Obviously, you realize that Dr. Chitwood's on an assignment, so you are stuck with me this morning. Praise God. I know many of you have already started inviting some people. I want you to take, if you have an iPhone, just swap across horizontally, and if you have an uh, Android, you just swap up and down. Then I want you to type hashtag potential church, hashtag I am a winner, hashtag say yes to my dream. Good morning, Sue Ann. Good morning, Bishop Cornelius. I'm so glad. Pam Gaddis, good morning. So glad you guys are with us this morning. You guys need to pray for me. Before we begin our service, I'd like to take just a second and tell you, if you missed the ICCM World Conference, you missed out on God. Man, he showed up in a mighty way. We were so excited. Somebody type hashtag ICCM World Conference. You better be there next year. Don't, don't miss it. In fact, do this for Dr. Chu, but I know this will get him fired up. Hashtag ICCM, ICCM, ICCM. Top it three times. Hashtag ICCM. That'll get him fired up. This was the best conference in the history of ICCM. Man, we had Real Talk Kim. She was on fire. We, we had just the best time with her. And guess what, guys? She's coming back next year. So you go ahead and register for next year for ICC and World Conference. I believe the dates are July 23rd through the 28th. You can register at ICCM World Conference or ICCMWorldwide.org and there's a conference uh, box on there, a tab that you just click on and you can register. It's really easy. Go ahead and get your seats registered now. I'm telling you hundreds of lives were changed. We had Dr. Chitwood, our general law overseer, Dr. Shannon Christopher Chitwood Cook, he was on fire for God, and they did a powerful job for the Get Fired Up conference. Special guest speakers were KJ52, John Morgan, Daryl Johnson, Daryl Croft, Helen Kennedy, Sherry Morris, Dr. John Avanzini, Cornelius Blake, Lee Valentine, Jason Avanzini, Aaron Meshagan, Alan Meshagan, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. We had some powerful men and women of God here this past week. We had an incredible time with the International IPAW, the uh, International Preachers Academy Worldwide, IPAW, I call it IPAW. Uh, these young men and women were so powerful, they preached the house down. And then on Saturday, we had the ordination consecration service where we actually sent and charged hundreds of pastors to go out and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. So I suggest that you need to get here next year and don't miss out on that powerful conference. Don't miss out on what God has for you, okay? Also, if you're not a member of the fastest growing and largest organization in the world, then you need to join ICCMWorldwide.org. If you've been called by God, not a man or a denomination, we will spend the rest of our life helping you Fulfill your dream because ICCM is the official sponsor of dreams. Also, become a part of the Founders Friend. Go to ICCM and click on the tab called Founders Friend. Now, today I have the honor and privilege to bring you the message that God had actually been sharing with me for about it, well, beginning of the year this year. 
I kept having these visions of me dressed as Wonder Woman, and I was like, oh, goodness, am I, like, not giving God credit? Am I, am I not relying on him enough? I did that in the past where I felt like I was Superwoman. I was a single mom with three kids, and I just thought I could do it all by myself, and God showed me real quick that I totally had to rely on him. So as we get into the word, I wanted to just tell you that I thank you for being here. I thank all of our family and our friends, and I'm so excited that you have decided to join us this morning, so let's get into the word. So when I was doing this, he told me, he said, Cammie, when I started preparing for this message, because Dr. Tewitt actually asked me to preach on Mother's Day. So as I was preparing for this message, I didn't understand why I kept having the visions as me as Wonder Woman. And then he told me, he said, Cammie, I need superheroes here on earth to fulfill their purpose. I need real life superheroes to be strong, to be courageous, and to go out and take a stand. So it is time for us to step up and be all in for him. You see this book right here? I'm not sure if you can see it or not. But this book right here, see it looks just plain, simple old book. You don't realize, you don't understand what's inside. You don't know if it's a good book, if it's going to be boring, if it's going to be exciting until you actually get in and you read and you start learning and you get into the chapters if it's really a good read or not. You know, people are like that too. And Je uh, Jeremiah 17.10 says this, and I'll be reading from the message because that's one of my favorites. Jeremiah 17.10 says, The heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful, a puzzle that no one can figure out. But I, God, search the heart and examine the mind. I get to the heart of the human. I get to the root of things. I treat them as they really are, not as they pretend to be. What's inside a person is what God sees. One of the first steps to being a superhero for God is to learn that it is important for us to really try to get to know other people because that's what God does. The Bible says that, the, that God searches the heart. That means that God looks deep inside human beings instead of evaluating us by the way we look on the surface. God knows every thought of ours. God knows us the way we truly are, not just as we seem to be. We can't fake God out. He knows everything. He knows the time that you told that little white lie to your mom. He knows that time that you used that fake ID trying to get into the club that you had no business getting into. He even knows the time that me and my best friend Summer took and we were hungry in the middle of the night and we snuck out my mom's little pickup truck and we drove to the crystal. I don't know if any of you know where the crystal or if you have a crystal where you are, but these are like little square burgers and they are delicious. Dr. Avanzini, every time he comes into the ICC and World Conference, he actually has us go get him some crystal burgers and also some Champy's fried chicken. Oh man, it is good. So basically, you can't fake God out. He knows everything. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says this. God told Samuel, looks aren't everything. Don't be impressed with his looks and stature. I've already eliminated him. God judges persons differently than humans. Men and women look at the face where God looks into the heart. Amen. I'm so thankful he looks into the heart. We must be slow to judge others and try to see people as God sees them. You know, we see people who are dressed different or maybe don't look very friendly and immediately think that they are someone we would never want to be friends with. But we could be making some of the biggest mistakes of our life and missing out on an opportunity of a friendship and a relationship that God wants for us just because we were so judgmental. For instance, one of the things that uh, I get a lot is that people will say, you know, they look at Dr. Tidwood and they say, you know what? He's wearing a suit 24-7. He's driving a Bentley, a Rolls Royce, a Mercedes. You never know what kind of car he's going to show up in. And they automatically think he's just, you know, all about money. But they're judging him from what they see on the outside. But it's the people that take the time that actually get to know him that truly know that this man has a heart for God and that his desire and his goal and his dream is to help others reach their dream and goal and their, fulfill their purpose that God has given them. So don't, don't be judgmental and don't, you know, take and, and judge people by the way they look or the way they dress. I have one of my friends at church, Erica, she's incredible. You know, she comes in, you never know. She may have pink hair, she may have blue hair, she may have green hair. She wears this funky makeup and these awesome, you know, outfits. 
but somebody on the outside, they may think that she's just too wild. But when you really get to know Erica, you see that this is the most precious woman of God that loves people, that would do anything for anybody. So don't make the mistake and judge people just because they may look a little bit different than you, may talk a little bit different. That's the biggest mistake that you can make because you could miss out on something special. It's always better not to judge others, but instead to try to understand their thoughts and feelings, to really get to know them the way God does. People are like books. You have to look inside to know what is really there. So now that we understand that we can't fake God out with our actions, and we must take time to really get to know others instead of judging, we must now learn this in order to be a real superhero for God. Friends, family, we need to stop playing church. We need to stop milly-mousing around. I mean, we live in a free nation, yet we are so afraid to take a stand and take a chance because we're afraid that we may offend someone. We are a people positioned for such a time as this, just like Queen Esther and King David were. Matthew 10, 26 through 28 says this, Don't be intimidated. Eventually, everything is going to be out in the open, and everyone will know how things really are. So don't hesitate to go public now. What does that mean, family? That means that we are to be strong and bold and courageous. Don't be afraid. And then it goes back. Don't be bluffed into silence by the threats of bullies. There's nothing that they can do to your soul your core being, save your fear for God who holds your entire life, body and soul in his hands. My God, did you catch that? Save your fear for God. Did you realize that we are writing the end of our story? Think about that. We are truly writing the end of our story. We have to start focusing on purpose, on our purpose. We must stop ignoring God's plan. Ignoring God's plan is like a downward spiral. We are witnessing that now in America. Romans 1, 21 through 23 says this, But God's angry displeasure erupts as acts of human mistrust and wrongdoing and lying accumulate as people try to put a shroud over truth. But the basic reality of God is plain enough. Open your eyes and there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created, people have always been able to see what their eyes and such as this can't see. Eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of his divine being. So nobody has a good excuse. What happened was this. People knew God perfectly well, but when they didn't treat him like God, refused him to worship him, they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction left in their lives. They pretended to know it all, but they were illiterate regarding life. They traded the glory of God, who holds the entire world in his hands, for cheap figurines that they can buy at any roadside stand. That just hurts when I think about it. We traded the glory of God, who holds the whole world in his hands, for cheap figurines, you can buy at any roadside stand. You know, we have a generation that thinks it's okay to self-identify. We have allowed families and children to decide who and what they think they should be instead of what our God created them to be. Last time I checked, God doesn't make mistakes. Stop compromising. Stop pretending. And start standing up for what is right. We look around and we see we are coming to the end of times. The signs of the Antichrist are everywhere. For instance... You know, when I think about this, this kind of, this is just the way when we look at the world, everything is going. Social media, for instance, you know, you look at social media and you see all these people, they're posting the best of the best and they're going on these grand vacations or they're talking about how wonderful this is or what they got. And it kind of, you know, puts people that are maybe going through warfare, it puts them in depression. They're saying depression is higher than it's ever been anxiety, suicide, we see that left and right. Even people with all this money in the whole wide world still cannot find happiness. Um, we have movies, for instance. We, we allow our kids to watch the most horrific movies and all those demonic spirits coming into our homes 
And we wonder why they become so comfortably numb in that. You know, used to, I can remember when we were little, you know, if a cuss word came on the TV, we would cut the TV off. And we didn't want that in our minds, and we didn't want that in our vocabulary. But now we are so comfortably numb to this language, it's like it's second language. We don't even, we don't even see that it's, and listen and hear and, and dismiss it immediately. We just kind of let it flow with the natural language. And these games, these games are horrible that we let our children play. I went in one day and I saw my son playing this game. I think it, I, I don't want to mention any names, but they have machine guns and they're shooting people and they become so comfortably numb. We think that, you know, people are saying that there's a gun, gun problem. There's no gun problem. It's what we have allowed society to put into our children and to think that it's okay. We've become so comfortably numb and we've got to get back to take a stand and to understand that, you know, a lot of these problems that we're having is because we've allowed some of this to go on with our family, with our children, and we just have to take a stand and say, no, enough is enough. Get back to clean movies, get back to, you know, clean language, and post things on social me media that are positive, but be transparent and be real. Back to 1 John 2.18 says this, Children, time is just about up. You heard that the Antichrist is coming. Well, they are all over the place, and across everywhere you look. That's how we know that we're close to the end. You know what? The Antichrist hates everything and anything that images Christ. For example, they are taking holy out of matrimony with the same-sex marriages. They are challenging men to act like women and women to act like men, and we are trying to say that this is okay. It's not okay. We are under the onslaught of the enemy attacking right before our very eyes while the church stands in silence. People, we must take a stand. 1 John 2, 20 through 21 says this, But you belong. The Holy One anointed you, and you all know it. I haven't been writing this to tell you something you don't know, but to confirm the truth that you do know, and to remind you that the truth doesn't breathe lies. You see this right here, the the magnificent holy word, the holy Bible. People, this, there's no fake news in this. All we hear is fake news, fake news, fake news. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. There's no fake news in here. It is time that we take a stand and be the superhero that God has created us to be. We need to be the ambassadors here on heaven. I mean, here ambassadors of earth here on heaven. We have to be bold and tell the devil that we belong to the incorruptible, unshakable, undeniable King of kings and Lord of lords. If we want to live a life that matters, we must be willing to do the things that matter. If you will type that on the screen for me. If we want to live a life that matters, we must be willing to do the things that matter. We must remember that we have the same DNA as our Father in heaven. Therefore, out of our mouth shall be words of power and authority. We must be like piercing swords, using the word of God as our weapon in our battle. Now, do you want to hear a funny story? When I was in high school my senior year, this is the honest-to-goodness truth, I got voted most likely to succeed because I was going to be married to Jamie Chitwood, Dr. Chitwood's son. I'm serious, but you know what? I'm so glad that they prophesied that over me. You know, there are many times that we get upset or we get hurt or offended by people and want what they say, we let it get in our spirit and we become bitter and hurt. I can truly say that I'm grateful and I'm honored that Dr. Chewett has given me the opportunity for being in this position. To be mentored like him, I always joke, but this is the honest and goodness truth. To be mentored by him is like receiving a Harvard education while getting a Navy SEAL training. If you work closely with Dr. Chu, would you understand exactly what I'm saying? Can I get an amen, Debbie Booth? Can I get an amen? Anyone that has been around him knows that this man is tough. He does not play, and he, he expects excellence. He demands it, and you just have to walk and just try to keep up with him. It has not been a walk in the park, and he honestly is extremely tough, but I know that because how tough he's been on me, there is nothing that I cannot handle. He has stretched me to all capacities. There have been times that I've been hurt by what he says, 
But God kept showing me. He said, Cammie, don't give up. Do not leave your post no matter what. I believe that's in Ecclesiastes 10.4 where it says, when your ruler rises against you, stand your post. And basically, keep calm because when you get calm, it kind of brings your ruler back down and he sees your true heart. heart. So don't get upset. Don't get offended. Don't go around and, and back talk and, and, you know, be upset and negative towards him. You stand your post no matter what because no matter what, God sees your heart. 2 Corinthians 6, 1 through 10 says this, Companions, as we are in this work with you, we beg you, please don't squander one bit of this marvelous life God has given us. God reminds us, I heard your call in the nick of time. The day you needed me, I was there to help. Well, now is the right time to listen. The day to be helped. Don't put it off. Don't frustrate God's work by showing up late Throw in a question mark over everything we're doing. Our work as servants gets validated or not in the details. People are watching us as we stay at our post, alertly, unswervingly, in hard times, tough times, bad times, when we're beaten up, jailed, and mobbed, working hard, working late, working without eating, with pure heart, clear mind, steady hand, and gentleness in holiness and honest love when we're telling the truth and what God's showing and when God is showing his power when we're doing our best setting things right when we're praised and when we're blamed slandered and honored true to our word though distrusted ignored by the world but recognized by God terrifically alive though rumored to be dead beaten with an inch of our lives, but refusing to die, immersed in tears, yet always filled with deep joy, living on, handout, ha living on handouts, yet enriching many, having nothing, having it all. My God, if that doesn't put a fire, on, fire under you, I don't know what will. So I've come to tell you today, it is time that we take a stand and we be all in for God. Revelation 3, 15 through 19 says this, I know you inside and out, and I find little to my liking. You're not cold, you're not hot. Far better to be either cold or hot. You're stale, you're stagnant. You make me want to vomit. You brag, I'm rich, I've got it made. I need nothing from anyone. Oblivious that in fact you are a pitiful, blind beggar, threadbare and homeless. Here's what I want you to do. Buy your gold from me, gold that's been through the refiner's fire. Then you'll be rich. Buy your clothes from me, clothes designed in heaven. You've gone around half naked long enough, haven't you? And buy medicine for your eyes from me so you can see, I mean really see. The people I love, I call to account, prod and correct, and guide so that they'll live at their very best. Now, up on your feet, about face, and run after God. Now, I have two of the most important questions that I could possibly ask. First, back to when, you know, I, I shared with you that God kept showing me this vision of me being Wonder Woman standing on a stage, and I kept thinking, this is crazy. Well, it seems like God always prepares me all through my whole entire life. I can tell story after story of things that God showed me either in a vision or, you know, you just kind of felt in your spirit, and he prepared me all along for things that were going to come. So over the past, I would probably say, since November, December, January, I kept seeing the number 316. And, you know, automatically when you see 316, you think of John 316, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish. And I was thinking, okay, God, am I, um, am I not doing everything? Do I need, what, you know, why do I keep seeing 316? I would turn on my phone in the middle of the night and it would be 316. I would you know, be looking at my messages on my phone, you know, at home or at work, and I would automatically just look, and my phone would say 316. I would be looking at a book and never look at the pages and look down, and it would be 316 or 
on TV, you know, 316, everywhere I was seeing, every single day I saw 316. And it wasn't until that I was preparing for the message for uh, Mother's Day that God showed me. He said, Cammy, you're going to do a salvation call. You're going to do your first real salvation call from the pulpit. And I was like, okay, God, you know, is this, you're going to have to give me the strength because this is something that I haven't done before. But you know what? I was so excited because to me, that is what we're here for. We are here to win souls for Christ. And every single person, whether you think so or not, you have been called by God to minister to others. That's why we go through the warfare that we go through is because, you know, he gives us things so that we can relate to others, so that we can win them to Christ. And so right now, if this is your first time being on Periscope or Facebook or whatever platform that you're on, and you haven't asked God to live in your heart, if you feel that this is something, and I'm telling you, it will be the best decision you've ever made in your whole entire life. If you feel that you're ready to make that decision, then I want you right now, don't be embarrassed, don't be ashamed. Of course, you know, nobody's looking, you're at home in your own privacy of your own home, which is wonderful. But I want you right now, I want you to just say this prayer with me. Father, I ask that you forgive me for all of my sins. Father, I ask that you forgive me for all of my sins. Father, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Father, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And Father, I thank you for dying on the cross for me so that I too can have eternal life. Father, I thank you for dying on the cross for me so that I too can have eternal life. See, it's that easy. It's so easy, and if you did that today, I want you to know that you have never been loved so much by anyone other than God. He is the best friend that I've ever had, and he's there for you when you feel like no one else is, and I'm just telling you, this has been the best thing that I ever did. I, I gave my life to Christ at eight years old at a vacation Bible school, which is just incredible because no one in my whole entire family was saved. My mom put me on a vacation Bible school bus for the summer just to get me out of the house, I guess. But that was the best decision I ever made, and I'm so thankful. And if you did that today, I want you to know that God loves you, that we here at Potential Church loves you, we are a family, and we want to welcome you here into God's family. Now, for the second most important question, and this is a very serious question. When I was studying about this message, this is what God told me. He said, how are you going to end this story? How are you going to end your story? If you were to die today, would you be proud of the way that you lived your life? Do you really feel that you fulfilled the purpose that I created you for? Did you accomplish the will of God that he had on your life? Are you really all in for God? Are you really giving it your all? And to be truthful, you need to be truthful with yourself. You need to be transparent. And I even did this. When I was going through the message, I, I really felt like God was saying, Kimmy, you're not all in. Before you get up and you preach on that message on my pulpit, in my pulpit, I need for you to be all in for me. No more faking it. You know, we have all these they want to talk about fake news. Well, let me tell you, there's some fake Christians out there too. They go to church every day. They're there every single day the door opens. Every time that there's something for, you know, a serving opportunity, they serve. You see them everywhere. You see them out on the streets doing things. But all you hear is them saying, ah, 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 ah. It sounds like somebody's spelling Mississippi. M, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, ah, you know. I mean, all you hear is ah, ah, ah. There's no God in that. They're doing it for the recognition of man and not for God. And that's where he told me, he said, I need for you to be all in, and I need for you to tell my people they need to be all in. So now, don't be embarrassed and don't be afraid. It's just you and God right now. You tell him that you want to be all in, and you are going to take a stand for everything that he has called you to do. You're going to go after it with all of your might. Now, 
I don't want to miss anything that God has for me, and I know you don't want, e- want to either. So at the end of my story, when I get to heaven, I want to hear my father say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I am so proud of you. You ran that race, and you ran strong and hard. You were transparent, and you were there for my people, and you loved my people, and I saw your heart. So well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, I want you to go and be strong and be courageous, and I want you to finish your, your race strong as well. Now, we also have just a few minutes, and I'd like to take this time and uh, tell you that if you've joined us today, I want you to take just a moment and uh, thank some of your uh, friends on here. Tell them that we love them and that we are so glad that they came here. And if this was their first time, welcome. We are so glad to meet you, and we hope that you come back next Sunday. Uh, Let's see. He's given me some instructions, so let's go through this. So many people are suffering and going through many difficult things. And our general overseer, God spoke to our general overseer during the ICCM World Conference, and he said he wanted him to do a spiritual warfare conference. So he has decided on December 6th through the 8th, we are going to have a spiritual warfare conference. If you have warfare with your spouses, warfare with your children, warfare with demonic spirits, warfare with their finances, we are going to have some of the most powerful speakers at this conference, and they will be able to explain how to become more aware of your enemies and to be able to be more than a conqueror in your warfare. Some of the special speakers, of course, are our very own Dr. H. Michael Chitwood, Bishop Daryl Croft, Dr. Shannon Cook, Dr. Calvin Tibbs, and Dr. Ron Phillips. We are so excited that they're going to be here. And also, we want to take just a moment. uh, If you go to register for that conference, it's only $25, by the way. Uh, You will receive a spiritual warfare manual and continental breakfast with Dr. Chitwood. You go to iccmworldwide.org or call 800-854-5891. And I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this conference. Now, for one of my most favorite times other than soul winning uh, is the time of service where we're actually able to give. So it's time to give. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, and I am a cheerful giver because I know what he has done for me. I can tell you testimony after testimony. I can tell you everything. Let's see, they're giving me a note. (laughs) Okay, I can tell you testimony after testimony what God has done with me and has blessed me because I am a giver. So if this is your church, then you know God requires 10% of your gross income. And if you want to harvest, then you must sow your seed offering. The only place that God tells us to test him is in our giving. So I want you to trust him now. Go to iccmworldwide.org and you can sow there. You can sow your tithe, 10%, and you can also sow your offering. Um, While you're on there, you can go ahead and register for the ICCM World Conference next year, or you can register for the uh, Spiritual Warfare Conference December 6th through the 8th. Do not miss out on God. And I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. I know that God is up to something big. I love you, and I decree that this week will be a prosperous week. Be blessed until next time.
You can't have my friend. 